properly designed and put in place, a HACCP or Hazard Analysis Critical Control Point system helps ensure food product safety. It can also improve productivity and increase competitive advantage, enhance market access, and provide a competitive advantage. HACCP may help to decrease liability and reduce waste and production costs. But where do you start? Let me show you. HACCP should be implemented for all processing lines within a plant. But this may be difficult to do all at once. So to start with, select one of the lines. There are 12 steps in developing a HACCP plan and setting up a system. These steps include the seven principles of HACCP. The first step is to establish your HACCP team. This team should involve people from across the organization with varied skills and from different departments within the plant. For example, senior management, production, quality control, sanitation, maintenance, shipping and receiving. You want people who have the best understanding of how changes will affect daily operations. It's important that management is involved, that they send a clear message about being committed and caring about the success of the program. And from the beginning, choose one person to be in charge of your HACCP program. Often, this person is called the HACCP coordinator. Everybody's got a role in HACCP. Ideally, your HACCP team should include maintenance staff, individuals with training in microbiology, food science, and someone with knowledge of regulations you should include at least one individual who is thoroughly familiar with all aspects of the facility and its products. The second step of setting up a HACCP system is to obtain product and processing information. This information should include the ingredients used in the product and their sources, ingredient properties and their specifications, product formulation, procedures at each stage of processing, equipment used, time and temperature required, and all potential sources of contamination before, during, and after processing. The third step is to describe the finished product and identify its intended use. This and the product processing information will help you in hazard analysis. Now we've described the product and identified intended uses. Good work. The fourth HACCP step is to illustrate the process flow and plant layout. First, construct a process flow diagram, detailing the operations involved, right from receiving raw materials and on through to mixing, blending, cooking, cooling, packaging, and distribution of the finished product. Enough details should be included to help you in your hazard identification. Next, create a plant schematic. This helps identify rooms and their function, also product flow and employee traffic. This is very useful in identifying and assessing potential hazards such as cross-contamination. That's how we figure out where the problems could be. Step 5 of setting up a HACCP system is to check the process flow diagram and plant schematic for accuracy and to make sure that no processing steps have been left out. This verifies any assumptions about product movement and employee activities. Now the sixth step is also the first principle of HACCP. It is to identify and assess hazards with the incoming materials, such as ingredients, the processing line, and the processing environment. Your objective is to identify all potential hazards that are a threat to consumer safety. In identifying hazards, consider the biological, allergenic, chemical, and physical hazards of the ingredients. Also consider all process steps and whether hazards could be introduced at each step. There are three aspects to consider in hazard analysis. First, identify hazards associated with ingredients and incoming material. Each food ingredient should be checked for whether it could be a source of contamination, if it's something that sustains the growth of microorganisms, whether it's a microbial inhibitor, and whether there are any chemical or physical hazards. Next, identify hazards associated with each of the processing steps. Review your process flow diagram, plant schematic, and employee traffic patterns. 
After identifying ingredient and process hazards, it's time to identify hazards associated with operating practices. Observe your operations long enough to be confident they are the usual process or practice. Observe the hygienic practices of employees. Look for cross-contamination after processing. If you're uncertain whether hazards exist in the ingredients or can be introduced in the process or operating practices, measurement and laboratory testing could be needed. Be sure to follow this up by analyzing the collected data so you can assess risks and set limits. All the information collected so far will help you in identifying hazards. Once hazards have been identified, the risk of each one needs to be assessed. Risk is a combination of two things. One is the probability of a hazard being present in a food product. The second is the severity of the consequences of being exposed to that hazard. So if there is a high likelihood of a hazard being present and the severity of consequences are high, then the overall risk is considered to be high. The seventh step of HACCP is the determination of critical control points, or CCPs. This is also the second HACCP principle. To identify critical control points, a team approach is best, since there's a considerable amount of discussion and science involved. The HACCP decision tree is an essential tool to help you identify CCPs. CCPs are selected based on a hazard assessment and operational procedures. Remember, a critical control point is needed if there's any risk of illness or injury resulting from the failure of an operation to prevent or minimize contamination, kill microorganisms, or inhibit bacterial growth. The eighth step of HACCP is to establish critical limits for each critical control point, which is also the third principle of HACCP. Please note that from this point on, each HACCP step mentioned is also a corresponding principle of HACCP. To know more about the seven principles of HACCP, please refer to Module 1. The most common parameters used for critical limits are time, temperature, water activity, pH, amount of preservatives, antibiotic residues, and microbiological and sensory information. Critical limits are set to ensure control of health hazards. They can be based on government regulations, industry standards, company standards, and scientific data. Make the criteria understandable and to the point so there's no confusion among employees. Displaying the critical limits next to the critical control points is an excellent way to help employees identify when the process is out of control. This is usually done by detailing the critical limit on the CCP monitoring record. It's vital to monitor your CCPs and record the data. And this is the ninth step to implementing HACCP, monitor critical control points. Once your control measures are in place and food safety criteria has been established, decide on effective monitoring procedures. To ensure food safety, you must establish a monitoring schedule. Continuous monitoring using automated methods is best. Also, in some cases, regulations require continuous monitoring, such as using a chart recorder when pasteurizing milk. For batch processes, it may be necessary to monitor every batch of product or second batch in large volume production. Where thousands of kilograms of products are produced in an hour and depending on the CCP, it may be necessary to monitor every five minutes. Employees need to know why monitoring is necessary. They also need to be trained to conduct the testing. And they need to be shown what action to take if there is a deviation or in other words, when a critical limit has not been met. But we are getting ahead of ourselves here. Monitoring is best accomplished with quick, easy methods, so a problem can be identified and corrected immediately. Monitoring can include chemical measurements. Examples include measuring pH, residual chlorine, percentage of salt, and sugar concentration. Physical measurements include temperature and or time, water activity, and metal detection. 
Now, the tenth step to implementing HACCP is to establish corrective action or deviation procedures. When results show that critical limits aren't met, prompt corrective action must be taken. The corrective action will depend on the potential hazards associated with the product. This might include increasing processing temperature, reheating or reprocessing, adjusting quantities of preservatives, stopping production, or holding product and investigating. To maximize your product safety, the right action is necessary to correct any deviations that happen. Step 11 of setting up your HACCP system is to establish verification procedures. Once your HACCP system is in place, have it critically reviewed. This can be done by quality assurance personnel, corporate food safety, or outside consultants. There are several ways to verify a HACCP system. Examples of verification procedures include checking monitoring records, observing operations at critical control points, checking calibration of monitoring instruments, analyzing and evaluating a product to confirm its safety, reviewing customer complaints for any allegations of foodborne illness and quality defects, and lastly, doing a statistical evaluation on monitoring data. Be sure to review your HACCP plan periodically to make sure it's working and then make the changes indicated from your verification procedures. The twelfth and final step of HACCP is to establish a record-keeping system. So what should you be keeping records of? Monitoring data, deviations, corrective action and verification of results must be clearly recorded. Records must specify who recorded and verify the data. These records are important because they give you a product processing profile. They can be used to confirm that the process was in control or the records can show you where any deviations need to be corrected. So that's the big picture. It's a lot of work, but it's definitely worth it. Putting a HACCP system in place is smart business. Let's take a look at what those implementation steps are once again. Step 1. Assemble your HACCP team. Step 2. Obtain product and processing information. Step 3. Describe the finished product and identify its intended use. Step 4. Construct a process flow diagram and plant schematic. Step 5. Check the process flow diagram and plant schematic for accuracy. Step 6. Identify and assess hazards. Step 7. Determine critical control points. Step 8. Establish critical limits for each critical control point. Step 9. Monitor critical control points. Step 10. Establish corrective action or deviation procedures. Step 11. Establish verification procedures. And Step 12. Establish a record-keeping system. By putting HACCP in place, you'll have a system that will be the pride of the company, the security of your customers, and the envy of your competitors. The HACCP system not only keeps your business competitive, it keeps your customers safe. If you need help, Alberta Agriculture and Rural Development has the information and support you need.